All right, so for us to uh, get a good understanding of single sideband, we first need to understand the spectrum. So this is M of omega, this is the spectrum of my voice, and it com is comprised of an upper sideband and a lower sideband. It's centered around zero, goes up to bandwidth B, and all the way down to negative bandwidth. So if you were to take the FFT of my voice, uh, with Al Hurt in the background, this is what you would see. But for us to do single sideband, this is uh, what we want to convert it to. Essentially, we want to eliminate this uh, lower sideband signal. We just want the upper sideband of our message. So, what, uh, what mathematical trick do you think we could do to do that? Well, the answer is right here. It's called the Hilbert Transform. So here's the message signal, M of T. It's got a real part and then this complex part calling M of hat. We call that the Hilbert Transform uh, in honor of the mathematician uh, Hilbert. Now, if we look at this as a big picture, we can kind of see how this all comes into effect. Essentially, we got here your M of omega and you're adding this guy and did this weird thing here where the negative frequency has been negative. And when you add these two, this guy and this guy cancel. And what you're left with is that. And that, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the mathematical trick to get just the bandwidth I need, which is right there. So we take our original guy, we add this shifted thing by the complex Hilbert transform, and this guy and that guy cancel, and we're left with that. So that's our final guy, thanks to the Hilbert guy. All right, hopefully that was clear as mud. So this is what we get, this is what we're left with after we take the uh, Hilbert transform, but he's still centered at zero. We need to put, somehow, shift this guy up to the carrier frequency. How do we do that? Well, if you were thinking the complex phaser, man, you're a smart person. And that's exactly what we're gonna use. We're gonna use our e to the j omega zero t. And if you look at that spectrum, he's right there shifted at omega zero t. So this multiplied with this gives us, are you ready for it folks? This, here's our upper sideband signal shifted at omega zero, and here's the equation, the Hilbert transform of our M of T multiplied by our negative E to the J omega zero T, sure enough, gives you a signal right here. And that is what we would call upper sideband modulation. Now we only have half our bandwidth. We don't have this other guy here, he's been eliminated. and. Uh, that's the advantage of single sideband is that if you're going to do voice communication and you want the smallest bandwidth possible to transmit further so that your noise floor of the other receiver is going to be a function of the bandwidth so the smaller bandwidth you can use the lower the noise floor blah 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 the further you're going to uh, talk so it's no accident that ham radio operators or anyone that wants to talk far and use voice um, they're going to use single sideband. But nothing's going to beat Morse code, but uh, not many people know Morse code, so, you know, people like voice instead. Alright, well just for completeness here, we're going to show you the uh, upper sideband signal converted in what's called discrete time. Basically, we replace time with little n. So here's our Hilbert transform in the uh, discrete time multiplied by our phaser, which has also now been converted to discrete time. So negative j 2 pi f0 divided by the sample rate times little n, and little n is 1, 2, 3, all the way up to big N. And big N is the number of samples that's going to be in m of n. And sure enough here, here's our spectrum centered around f0. and when you're working with sampled signals, it's good to note that the range you can work with is gonna be negative sample rate divided by two, 
the plus sample rate divided by two. So that's your equation, folks. If you want to do upper sideband modulation, now we're going to go a little bit crazy here, and we're going to actually do many upper sideband signals all in one wave file. And we're going to just take all of these guys and multiply them by different carriers. And that will give us many upper sideband signals uh, within our wave file. And then we're going to go ahead and um, play this through SDR Sharp software program and see if it can decode it. So, there you have it folks. Single sideband modulation. Here's the equation. That's the final spectrum. That's how you do it. There's uh, hardware techniques that you can do this, but nowadays with DSP, this is all done in um, digital signal processing. All right, so now we will take this to SDR Sharp and see what we get.